So one time I got really sick on my mission towards the beginning of it just because I was getting used to the change of culture and food and everything and I remember getting so sick and I remember praying to God saying, you know, why am, why am I so sick? Why can't you just heal me so I can go out and preach the gospel? And I think a couple weeks just passed by where I just wasn't getting better and it was really frustrating. But I remember praying one time and saying, you know, why aren't you healing me and all of this kind of complaining. And then this thought came to me that basically said, hey, I won't take you out of your affliction, but if you ask me, I will help you get through it. And so that just really made me realize that God sometimes won't take away our trials, but if we ask for his help, he will help us to get through them. And so from that moment, instead of praying to God to help him get me out of the trial, I just asked for his, him help, his help to get me through it, and I feel that he did, and I was still able to do the things that I was needing to do. The most extreme weather I experienced in Colombia was probably around 110 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, just blistering hot in the day. I remember one time my companion and I, we were in Cucuta, we were walking up this huge hill to get to this lady's house, and uh, we, we get there and we're sweating and it's hot and it's the middle of the day and we're so parched and so thirsty. We get to this lady's house and she's like, elders, would you like something to drink? And we were like, oh, we, we were like, we'd love to. So she starts preparing for us this lemonade and she brings it out to us in this just this cold fresh glass of lemonade and I'm so excited to drink it and I go to drink it but I look inside and I realize something and I realize that there are little ants just floating around in the lemonade probably 10 or 15 ants just floating around and so I look at my companion with kind of a shocked look on my face and he looks back at me and he's like what do we do and you know I don't want to be drinking this and so we uh, it's kind of funny we told the sister that we were fasting and that we really couldn't drink it and it killed us because we were so hot and we wanted to drink it so bad but it was like instead of lemonade it was lem ant aid <laughs> and so, and so we, we couldn't, but it did get really hot there. Something that I learned on my mission was just to learn how to appreciate being grateful. I realized that the people there just live such humble lives. They don't have carpet, they don't have dishwashers, they don't have dryers, they don't have microwaves, um, they just cook on the stove, they don't have ovens. And it's just a really humbling experience to live there for two years and realize that we have it really good. And to realize that, you know, you don't need all of these things to be happy. And so that was just a, an experience that taught me that you can be happy in any situation you're in. And it doesn't matter if you're going through a trial or it doesn't matter if you're going through a hard time in your life. You can be happy no matter what. And you can find light in the dark and you can find peace in the storm. And God sent us here to be happy and so we should live in that way. In Colombia, when you're walking on the street, there's a lot of stray dogs everywhere. And sometimes they'll start barking at you or they'll start chasing after you. But the dogs have been trained down there that if they start chasing up, if they start chasing after you, the only thing you have to do is bend down and pretend like you're picking up a rock because the dogs have been trained that they probably get rocks thrown at them all the time and they're scared of that. So if they see that you're, pick, that you're going down to the ground to pick up a rock, then they'll run away. So that's just something that I learned kind of about halfway through my mission is that um, dogs will be scared of you if you look like you're gonna throw a rock at them. So we were teaching a, uh, a couple one time, their name was Sonia and Ramiro. They lived in the city of, of Bogota and they were pretty poor, they weren't married, but they had two little kids and we, we started teaching them and they were just completely receptive. They were the golden investigator, as you would say. Um, they lived in really humble circumstances in, in Colombia, they uh, sell things on the streets, in little booths, little vendors, they'll sell, you know, it's kind of funny, they'll sell cell phone minutes. They'll have these cell phones attached to chains, attached to their booth, that people don't own phones in Colombia. So they'll go and they'll buy, you know, a few minutes, and then the people will look at however minutes you called, and they'll charge you for those minutes. And they'll sell cell phone minutes and candies and natural juices and just all these different things in these booths. And so both Sonia and Ramiro, they worked in these little booths, and, you know, they didn't make very much money doing it. But we just saw how humble they were and how receptive they were to the gospel. And um, they received a lot of opposition right away. You know, Sonia, when she was not having customers in her booth, she would just be sitting on the street reading her Book of Mormon in plain sight with people passing on every side. And she got a lot of opposition from that. She would have people yell at her saying that she was reading a book from the devil and she would have other people telling her to come to their church. And why was she investigating this Mormon church? But they were extremely blessed from it. Um, Ramiro, he, 
he, they, we told them that, you know, they had to get married if they were to get baptized and they really wanted to. But in Colombia, marriages are really expensive and they're not very common. And so it's really hard for a couple to get married there. But they showed their faith and Ramiro told us that one day he was walking down the street and he had found just the, on the street, he had found just the amount of money that they needed to get married. And it was a pretty big amount of money. It was probably like 60 bucks or something that he found, which in Colombia is a lot of money. But he was able to find it and they were able to go get married. And it was just a beautiful experience knowing that God will help us out in any situation that we're in. It doesn't matter how humble we are or what situation we live in. If we show faith to him, he will bless us. And so we were able to get this couple married and they were able to get baptized. And it was just beautiful seeing the faith that they showed and the blessings that they received from it. If you're going to Colombia, make sure to bring lots of clothes to be warm in. You will be, you'll get really hot, so pack light. But then also if you're going to Bogota, make sure that you wear, you know, you have to have an umbrella. And if you don't, they sell umbrellas basically on every street corner. Um, but, you know, wear some kind of clothes that you're, you're willing to get wet in because you will get wet most likely wherever you go in Colombia. Um, but yes, make sure to bring clothes that you'll be really hot in as well because it gets hot there too. Colombia also has some interesting foods that you wouldn't have here in the States. Um, I remember trying um, fried ants. So they had these big ants called hormigas culonas which are like colony ants, which are just these massive, massive ants that are known for this specific part in Colombia. And I think that's the only part of the world where there, there, there are ants that big. But they fry up these ants and then you eat them just like peanuts. And some people, you know, kids and families will just eat these just like peanuts. And so I remember having one and uh, to me it didn't taste like a peanut. I mean, it, it just tasted kind of burned and it tasted like a burned match, but I mean, they love it down there. Um, I also remember having um, chicken gizzard, pasta, uh, cow tongue, chicken feet, pig's feet. Um, I had uh, basically every part of the cow and of the chicken. They had this cow stomach soup that's called a mute, and it's actually really good. Um, if you just kind of tell yourself, you know, to not think about what you're eating, it is really good because it's, it's cow stomach soup. And if you look in, you'll just see these little pieces of meat with... I guess little fibers or hairs coming out of it. Um, but I mean, if you just get past that, it is it's a really good tasting soup.